Hey everybody, how's it going? Hopefully you all are having a great day today. For today's video, I want to do a bit of a live commentary here of uh, me and my espresso making process. For context, I got a new bean from a local roastery called Pete's, and I've been spending a lot of time trying to dial this bean in. Um, I don't know if you could see in the trash there, but there are several pucks, um, all of which have just been absolute gushers. Uh, I've been able to get no pressure, been able to get uh, really nothing close to an espresso shot. Now, this is sort of intentional. Um, when I first start, I try and go a bit too coarse on the grind and then work my way down versus going too fine and working my way more coarse. Uh, I find that this method helps dial it in a little bit quicker, right? Because you may feel like you're getting nine bars of pressure and you might be hitting it in a time that is somewhat acceptable, um, but the taste profile might be off. So I found by going a bit of a coarser grind and then tightening it up, going a little bit finer after that, um, it, it's yielded pretty good results here. So that is a tip that I learned uh, from Lance and I'll link that video down below. So uh, what you're seeing right now is a little bit of prep of me cleaning uh, the portafilter basket for the Flare Pro 2 after a yet again a failed espresso attempt. So this one, I did a pretty big jump on the uh, Easy Espresso uh, J Max. I went from a one full rotation, one partial rotation, and zero little steps in between to just a 1.0.0. And uh, as you can tell by the bean color, this is a very dark roast. Um, usually what I do prior to doing this, I, uh, I like to put all the beans out onto a tray and, uh, I will sort them and look for any type of bean that's kind of lighter roasted. Um, but this one, I mean, the roast is so dark that even these slightly lighter roasted ones, uh, are not going to produce that big of a difference in the taste. Maybe if I was working with a medium roast and you had a bit of a, a almost like a light roast bean in there. Um, you know, you could get some flavor differences there, but I mean, with as dark as these roasts are, um, really not, really not wholly necessary. So, uh, currently going with the grind here, I'm trying my best to do a slow and consistent grind. Um, I'm not trying to just throw it as fast as I can or, or anything like that. I want to get a nice consistent grind, um, in the grinder. I'll let that finish up here. So one thing that I would like to note for this bean is it was very, very, um, had very low retention inside of the grinder itself. Typically I, I do spritz them down with a bit of water, but I was finding that with this specific, um, bean, I was getting no retention, uh, post grind. And it was, it was very, very easy. So right now I'm going to be taking the WDT tool and going to be starting to go through and really try and break up some of these smaller clumps down below. Now, when you use a WDT tool or a Weiss distribution technique tool, uh, you wanna start at the bottom. You don't wanna be scraping the bottom. Uh, you might risk bending the needles, but you start at the bottom and work your way in small circles while moving your arm in sort of a bigger circle pattern. You'll notice I'm doing small tight circles um, but still kind of cycling my way around uh, the portafilter here. Now I'm going to do a bit of a, a bit of a vibration um, tamping, I guess you could call it, uh, just to get the grounds down a little bit. Um, there I noticed it was a little bit um, uneven with how I was doing my little vibration tamping. So I decided, you know what, let's just go back through. I'm going to redo my WDT tool. Um, I, I just didn't want there to be a consistent um, density in a certain area and a lack of consistent density in another. So I figure I just go through and uh, do the WD tool again. Now, one one tool that I do 
think about getting, but it's a bit hard with the Flare Pro 2 given the basket size is a 45.5 millimeter versus the industry standard 58 millimeter. Um, is looking into the OCD tool. I do think that that would make this time a little bit easier um, to just kind of get all the grounds evenly uh, smoothed over pre-tamping. Uh, for those of you that work with a Flare Pro 2, you'll know that pretty much anything above a 16 and a half gram dosage uh, post grind is probably going to be sinking over the lip of the portafilter basket. So, or at least it does for me. Um, so I just need to get down just a little bit before I go through with the norm four tamper. Um, and here I'm doing the pretty much the industry standard, if you will, for heating up my chamber here, uh, just letting it sit over the uh, boiling kettle. Um, I use a cheap $5 Amazon uh, rubber silicone uh, funnel that I just cut the base off of, um, but it does get very hot, so make sure you use gloves. So now what we're going to be doing is we're going to be zeroing out our espresso glass. So that way, when we start going, we'll know exactly what ratio to use. Uh, for this bean in particular, I used a 1.85 ratio. Uh, so that's one part water to uh, 1.8, or I'm sorry, one, one unit of coffee to 1.85 units of liquid. Um, so here, go in, I'm starting my timer. Just the scale a little bit here and adjusting the timer and starting it. I did not take into account how hard this was going to be to film and pull on the Flare Pro 2. The lever is kind of short, so you really have to get your body into it. Um, but I was trying to keep my chest upright, given that the uh, the mount for my camera, uh, which just was my cell phone, um, is on my chest. So I was doing my best to keep my chest upright while maintaining pressure and also trying to, you know, get the right amount of liquid out here um, all while trying to contain my excitement that I'm finally going to have a glass that isn't absolutely uh, just done in maybe 15 seconds tops. So a bit of excitement here. Um, and here just when using the Flare Pro 2, I always recommend you guys just kind of finish out what's in the chamber, uh, just push the rest of it through. Um, one, it'll prevent some small burns if you take off the chamber and the hot water hits your hand. Uh, but two, I find that it actually makes a really nice puck density. Um, and getting rid of the puck out of the uh, portafilter basket is actually a lot easier when I do this. So just a little note for you Flare Pro 2 users out there. Uh, just go ahead and finish out the pull uh, whenever you're done with your glass. Again, like you see, I have a second glass, so I'll just move the first one out of the way. I think right there I was seeing a little bit of a, like a little fun bubble on the bottom side of my portafilter basket. Why? I'm not too sure. Uh, actually, never really seen that before, but uh, yep. You can see the little bubble right there. Look at that bad boy. Very cool. And down he goes. And the moment of truth. Lost my spoon. There's my spoon. All right. We're going to give it the old mixy mix. And right away, I noticed that the, the crema was good. It had a nice oily texture to it. My spoon even kind of like stuck to the side a little bit maybe it was just me imagining it from doing bad uh bad pulls but yeah it was it was fantastic i'll let my reaction tell the story damn that's good <laughs> yeah you can tell my excitement but anyways hope you enjoyed this uh hopefully it was a fun video for you and i look to probably do more of these videos where i just overlay some pov of me making espresso maybe talk about some other things um, but whatever, whatever it ends up happening, let me know if you like this kind of format down in the comment section. I do reply to everything and I hope you all have a wonderful day.